How are we doing guys? Welcome back to Dave's Details for the Mainly Just Martial Arts YouTube channel. Uh, today we're just going to literally follow straight on uh, from the last video I did. So the last one we did was downward block. So now I'm going to do upward block. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, it makes most sense to kind of literally go through our core syllabus. So we're going to do the six blocks one after another. We're going to go straight to kicks after that. Uh, and then we'll start looking at details for like our patterns. Uh, and then we'll do all sorts of things because that will start being a bit more diverse. Okay, but I want to get the core syllabus down to help as many people within our club as possible. Okay, so again, like I say, front down block, gonna do upper block, still in a front stance, so if you need front stance details, I've got a video on front stance independently, go have a little peek. Um, so, straight into block, upper block. Still gonna be left, upwards, touching your head, easy peasy. Um, we like to have this nice slant, on our arm. So if something's coming in, that way, this way, that way, it's just got a, a better chance of something glancing off and it's got a little bit more give before it connects with your head. Okay? Assuming the strike is coming downwards. Okay? But we'll go with that analogy for now here. So again, if it's a flat block and something connects, it's got a much greater chance of buckling and it's still going to get, yeah, you've got a bit more space if the angle is there really quite important for what we do, okay? Now, the second thing that we talk about for upper block okay, is that it's also something that's coming this way, okay? So it's not necessarily something that's coming down on top of your head, even though, generally speaking, that's how we drill it, especially for little dragons. Yeah, we've got one of those dragon mallet and spongy things. <laughs> you bash them on heads, it's like whack and off. Um, to get them, get them to understand they must go high with it, and they've got to protect their head. Okay, all of their head. Okay, these knuckles and my fists, when I do my upper block, they must at least cover the ears here. If I'm only doing this, I'm only half guarded, completely useless. Okay, it's got to cover all of my head like an umbrella. Okay? But second use of this block, like I say, it's something coming this way towards my face. So if it's a punch coming this way, something like that, something's coming straight down the line. It's really useful for clearance. Yeah, take it up and above my head, opens the your opponent up, off, get something in underneath, okay? Which is why we teach it a certain way, okay? So when we come forward and do block one, with my head, literally do, when you do your next one, come from your ribs, same as everything else we do pretty much, it comes up and crosses, okay? And we're trying to get this up as early as possible so they need up a block, okay? It comes up and it one passes the other when you come in forwards, okay? Now, I, I understand some people like their upper blocks to go on the inside, like us. Some people have it so it goes on the outside. In the grand scheme of things, whether it's inside or outside, okay, it's not a vast amount of difference to the practicality, but inside is what we ask our guys to do. This is further out, so when this comes in, I've got a bit more control over it. It's stronger because it's closer to me while it's travelling to its final Resting place, if you like. Very strange analogy of those measures. Yeah? So when we're doing this, they cross, okay? But they don't stop. That's one of the most irritating things for us. Yeah? Why start generating power and speed from here only to go. <coughs> yeah? It's one of the only blocks that doesn't really have a fold position. Yeah? Not for us. Okay? So this goes fold block, right? Down the blocks. We go fold, chop, chop, punch. Okay, we go fold here for double super max. We go fold in for chun damage. Upper block doesn't. Okay, this for all intents and purposes is its fold position. It's back here, it's ready. Okay, we just step and swap 100 miles, not to 100 miles an hour, do its job, and then hit the brakes. Okay, if the journey is a straight line, there's not much point in it going A to B, then B to C. Why not just go A to C, yeah? One journey, make it as strong and as quick as possible, okay? It doesn't need to go every time you step, okay? Because all that effort that you made to get it to here has now gone. So you've only got this bit of shoulder left, okay? And if you mistime your stances, which is the next bit, yeah, you step into fold, and then you've got very little twist or momentum from your hips to get that to do its job. You've got a bit, okay? <coughs> but why not use all your 
strength, speed, and momentum. Okay, so when we get our guys to do that, what they do is not fold and block, fold and block like the others. Okay, it's singular. So it goes one. First one. Yeah, wind. When you do your next one, come straight from here. Quick, and it lands together. Yeah, my foot has that traction. Bam! That block is already travelling there. Yeah, not because again. Any momentum, speed, and power you can generate through your body movement and your hips and your shoulders is gone. Yeah, I'm already going, you know, moving. Have this go with it. Yeah, cumulative speed, cumulative force. Okay, but going start, stop, swap isn't helping you. It's not, you're not using the strength that your body naturally has that you can utilize. Yeah? So from here, we bam, as you land. When you do your next one, yeah, get it straight in, back, get the angle, get it high, cover your head. This one's took back ready, okay? Even on the turn, foot and twist, yeah? Not this. Yeah, Okay, foot, twist, okay? Because I'm coming this way around, when that arm goes up, it goes with my twist. Okay? It makes sense to do it that way, rather than trying to fold block. Okay, so do it from the side. I'll go one, two, three, foot, all the way. And because I'm doing the turn and the block at the same time, it covers all this area. Okay, here, I isolate the block. Bam. Bam. Okay, so do it from here and foot across. Yeah, it goes straight up the centre line. Yeah, so something that's coming in here, boof, it's going to catch. Something that's coming down on top, boof, it's going to catch. Okay. Yes, we understand that this is not practical. It has very little utility for street fights, cage fights, you know, anything like that. Yeah. Even if you're training, you know, cross in type and stuff like that, it's when you see them doing sport matches or full contact matches. Very rarely will we see an upper block. Okay? But you go, you parry, you dodge, you duck, you guard, you cover. Okay? But for the use for what it's for, if it does not cover your centre line, it is not doing its job. Yeah? It needs to pass in front of your face, pass your other guard so you've got hands up at all time to some extent. Okay? And it's going to cover high with your head. We don't want kids doing this. Doesn't work. Or just sitting on your head, everything that hits that arm. <coughs> rattles your brain, okay? And the last point, especially kids in particular, getting the idea of coming up the centre line to do its job, sometimes a bit of a challenge, because they seem to want to go like this. And I have no, I have no real analogy for what this looks like. <laughs> it just looks weird, okay? So in the vast amount of time between blocks, they are simply just unguarded. Boop. Oh, I'm, I'm not covering anything. Yeah, it, it doesn't work. It's, it, it has no. It's neither use nor ornament. <laughs> yeah, as my mother would say. Yeah, your upper block must do its job. Okay, you must do its job. Most of your blocks, like I say, if you imagine, uh, uh, we talked about the, the rectangle from my centre on the floor where my weight is to my feet, up my body to my shoulders across. This is my rectangle. If I stick my elbows out, okay, that's as wide as a block ever needs to be. Okay, including the fold and the, and the movement that folds go in. Okay, I don't need to be doing this. Okay, I, I'm, I'm never blocking anything out here, not with a formal block anyway. It makes no sense. Okay, everything travels up the centre line, covers your centre line, has to have function and utility within the syllabus or within the context you're explaining it as. Okay, so when we're doing this, okay, up centre line, bam, as you land, Bam, bam. Trying to get a nice straight arm from elbow to knuckles. Okay, straight arm. Yeah, no sort of bent wrists. And we're not coming it flat or buckle. We're not covering or hiding under it. It's not sitting on us. What else do people do? Yeah, oh yeah, no weak hands. You can see through them like, like a telescope. Yeah, rubbish. Um, and not veins out. Again, kids are a bit more flexible, so they manage to do that more than adults. But some people they really to try and go like wrist out. Okay. Well, these are delicate. Yeah, you've got veins and arteries there, keep them in. Okay. Personally, I use the blade in my forearm, but I'm definitely not this. 
Okay? Same reason we don't do like downward block with our wrist up. Yeah, don't, don't expose the things that are more precious. <laughs> Keep the blood in your body. Um, but other than that, that's it for upward block. Front stance, cover your centre line, cover your face, cover all of your head, right across to your far ear. Turns as before, but it, it's got to have function, even though in the grand scheme of things, it's not quite practical, if you see what I mean. Other than that, thank you very much, and we've won blocks next time. Thank you very much.